bipartisan agreement on a commission to investigate the January 6th attack on the Capitol. The chairman and ranking member of the Homeland Security Committee, Democrat Benny Thompson, and Republican John Katko introduced a bill that would establish a 10-person commission to investigate the, quote, domestic terrorist attack upon the United States Capitol, as well as the influencing factors that fomented such an attack on American representative democracy. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi says the bipartisan bill will be on the House floor as early as next week, even though Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy says he has not signed off on it. And multiple members of the Republican caucus keep, well, denying the attack even happened. My constituents demand answers, but the truth is being censored and covered up. As a result, the DOJ is harassing, harassing peaceful patriots across the country. It was Trump supporters who lost their lives that day, uh, not Trump supporters who were taking the lives of others. Let me be clear. There was no insurrection, and to call it an insurrection, in my opinion, is a bold-faced lie. Democratic Congressman David Cicilline of Rhode Island is now circulating a resolution to censure those Republican House members who continue to defend the attack on the Capitol, and he joins me now. Um, Congressman, what, what would this resolution do? Well, uh, Chris, the truth matters, and when you have members of Congress who are repeating uh, falsehoods, mischaracterizations about the violent and bloody insurrection that occurred on January 6th, it's, it's very dangerous. It really emboldens others who might consider doing the same thing if it can be explained away. These things are seen, this sort of misinformation is all over the web. But we now have members of Congress in official proceedings making statements which m completely mischaracterize these events and deny they happened, the January 6th deniers. And we cannot let that go unaccounted for. And so we have a responsibility to call it out, to condemn it, to acknowledge what really happened, which everyone saw with their own eyes. They don't have to listen to Republican lies. They saw it with their own eyes. It was a bloody attack on the Capitol where five people died. Significant damage was done to the building. Dozens more people were injured. Uh, they were there chanting, hang Mike Pence, hunting for members of Congress. And it's important that members of Congress not be allowed to completely rewrite history and, and just wish this away. And there has, to be a re there has to be accountability for that. There has to be some action taken by the Congress of the United States to not permit members to engage in this kind of mischaracterization and spreading of lies about January 6th which are very dangerous. The truth matters, particularly when it comes to defending our democracy and responding to a violent and bloody insurrection against the government of the United States. I was, um, I was a bit surprised about the announcement on the Bipartisan Commission uh, today. Do you think there's actual momentum there? Yes, I think it's very good news. Uh, congratulations to Chairman Thompson and Ranking Member Katko for negotiating this. I think most uh, fair-minded people think it's very important that we understand how this happened, all of the contributing circumstances, and that we uh, ensure that we do everything in our power to be sure it never happens again, to protect the Capitol, the employees of the Capitol, members of Congress, and most importantly, to protect our democracy. So I think this is a really important step. Uh, and I think the American people People deserve to know all of the facts and circumstances that led up to the violent attack on the capital of the United States that killed five people, including one police officer, uh, and this commission will uh, allow that to happen. I want to play this clip of Liz Cheney talking to John Carl about what she thinks Kevin McCarthy uh, should have to say to the commission. Take a listen. Should Kevin McCarthy be willing to speak, testify before that commission? After all, he is one of the few people that we know of that was actually talking to Donald Trump while the attack was taking place. He absolutely should, and, and I wouldn't be surprised uh, if he were subpoenaed. I think that he very clearly and said publicly that he's got information about uh, the president's uh, state of mind that day. The elements of that commission are exactly as they should be. What do you think about that? Well, I think the commission has to be empowered uh, to gather up all of the evidence necessary to make findings and complete their report. And I think there's no question that Kevin McCarthy has information. I'll obviously leave it to the commission members to make that determination. But we presented uh, uh, that 
evidence during the impeachment trial when uh, Kevin McCarthy was pleading with former President Trump, asking him for help. And he first tried to say, oh, those were Antifa people. And Kevin McCarthy said, no, Mr. President, these are your people. And the president, former president said, right. well, maybe they just cared more about the election than you. So uh, I think there's a lot Kevin McCarthy has to share with any fact finder. Congressman, before I let you go, um, obviously you're, you're serving the U.S. Congress uh, as uh, the the U.S. is involved in negotiations, perhaps for some kind of ceasefire in uh, Israel. Uh, the the violence there continuing. The IDF continues to strike uh, Gaza. There are rockets that continue to fly towards Israel. Um, a lot of your uh, colleagues have spoken out saying they think the Biden administration should do more. Uh, to to lean on the Netanyahu government in Israel to stop the airstrikes in Gaza. Do you agree with that, or do you think uh, the status quo right now is acceptable? No, I, I think it's very important that we do all that we can to de-escalate the violence in the Palestinian Authority and in Israel. This is obviously a very, very dangerous moment. Uh, we, we ought to be doing everything we can to protect any further loss of life on both sides of this conflict and do all that we can to bring the parties back to the negotiating table to work toward a two-state solution. But we need to um, call for a ceasefire, call for a cessation of hostilities, and uh, hopefully parties will quickly do so. All right, Congressman David Cicilline, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. 